Hello wine lovers, today we'll talk about what makes so special Portuguese and Spanish wines. I've talked with Silvia from Os Goliardos, a movement that it's all about the artistic side of wine. And she told us a little bit what makes these wines from the Iberia Peninsula so special. That's next. Uh, we're here in Café Tati, uh, the, the several wines, because there's this link between Guliardos and Café Tati. Can you explain how this came up? Uh, well, actually, uh, so since uh, Café Tati opened uh, some years ago, mm -hmm. I believe, something like five years ago, they were searching for wines, more uh, uh, character wines, and they came to talk to us, and we became... Uh, friends and also partners uh, in this uh, in in this part mm -hmm. of the of the cafe tati and this idea is to uh, give to to uh, to promote more natural wines mm -hmm. more crafted wines uh, and so we have a selection from different countries of europe with uh, very special producers we have uh, wines from portugal from like umus in the lisbon mm -hmm. region but we have from uh, rodono texier we have uh, Serradinha and we have from Down Tavares, but then we have from Madrid and then we have from south of Italy um, uh, Campina, uh, Cantina Giardino, we have from Tuscany uh, the from Chianti Classic with Giovanna Morganti and then we have for example from uh, 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 Bernard Baudry uh, from Chinon in, uh, in France. So it's a really uh, large selection also with uh, special ports like from mm -hmm. from small a small uh, house which is uh, Val de Figueira that has uh, great vintages. Yeah. Still at Café Tati, but in another uh, area. This is the lounge, I think, of Café Tati. Um, comparing Portuguese and Spanish wines with the other regions of the world, because nowadays there's a, lo a lot of offers in the market. Uh, you get uh, even in the, the new producing countries, Australia, you get uh, United States, you get South South America. What uh, does these wines have in special? What uh, what are their character of Portuguese and Spanish wines? Okay. Well, uh, in the Iberic uh, region, uh, the wines started really with the Romans uh, mm -hmm. that uh, brought us also from Mediterranean countries that brought us the wine and the culture of wine, especially that. Uh, and we have for centuries been producing wines, uh, some with the idea of producing high quality to sell, to export, and others for home consumption. That's something really uh, special from the old world of the wines, mm -hmm. that people, uh, our grandfathers, were grandparents were producing wine to a home consumption without a pretension of quality. Yeah. It was a normal consumption. In Portugal and Spain, uh, for centuries we have been uh, producing wine, so we kept a lot of varieties. Good. Varieties, uh, great varieties. So, for example, Portugal is the country that, if you take into it account the surface of the country, that you have more variety of grapes. Okay. This so. means that you have something like 300 different varieties. Okay. So, um, out of the mainstream of Cabernet si Sauvignon, Merlot, etc., you have with real strange names actually, like yeah. Dog Strangler, yeah. Chiganacão, for instance. Chiganacão, <laughs> uh, Burrado das Moscas, I can't even translate. Fly, it. something related with flies, but uh, uh, it's good, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we have really a huge variety of grapes. Uh, Portugal has been spared of this tendency to put uh, worldwide varieties uh, mm -hmm. and so we're still really using the local varieties. Okay. It's really something uh, interesting. Uh, and also Spain. So there are a lot of grapes that have been traveling for in, in the, Europe, the Iberic Peninsula. And for example, if you take Tinta Roriz in Portugal, which is Tempranillo in Spain, Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's a variety that has 13 different names in the Iberic Peninsula. Okay. It's the same grape, but with, but different, with different names. names. 
producers are blending a lot of them they're, they're, they're flexible in blending and even with the mainstream ones to get um, wines that uh, are uh, that people really enjoy places uh, in Portugal it's really uh, clear that you see there's a border and the border is the Atlantic and the continental the interior yeah. country when you have an Atlantic uh, part mm -hmm. uh, where the vineyards were classic uh, vineyards uh, it's the, the climate was not uh, very extreme. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a more temperate, uh, more uh, sure. regular climate, and so uh, sometimes the the summer was not very hot. Uh, it was not always easy to get to the ripeness of the grapes, mm -hmm. so you had to choose the grapes. So in more classic and more risky places like the Atlantic, mm -hmm. you had to choose the grapes. So you have more. Uh, wines that are made with only one variety. While if you go to the interior country, all the wines, all the varieties were more easy to uh, produce. Yeah. So you have more blend wines. Oh, okay. okay. So that's, uh, that's the one point. of the, the, the reasons of this separation between the coast and the interior. Exactly. While in the coast you have more uh, fresher wines, mm -hmm. oh. the interior you have more powerful wines. Yeah. Okay. And that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any special uh, region that you really enjoy, just write to us in our comment section. We'd love to hear it. See you next time. Take care.